Hey, hey, what is up, everybody? Alexis Ada here, and welcome to my YouTube channel. What is up everybody? Alexis Ida here. So excited to be filming this Q&A. Please don't forget to comment down below. Don't forget to like and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you are notified the next time that I post. Be sure to follow my business Instagram so you can stay updated with message of the day. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So, I asked you guys on my um, Instagram to ask me questions. You guys left some wonderful questions and they were kind of repetitive. So, I'm going to like combine them all and just answer the main question in addition to a few others. So, the main question that was asked was how do I maintain being obedient and confident in who God has called me to be? Meanwhile, living like, you know, being like living in the world. So, first things first, we are in the world, but we are not supposed to be of the world. And when I say of the world, like worship things of the world, prioritize things of the world over God, you know, we're not supposed to do that. It's just like a little disclaimer, but how I manage to stay confident and obedient in who God has called me to be in spite of living in the world is that I choose it every day. Every day I choose god every day i choose my walk over i choose my walk in christ over being worldly every day i choose my spirit i choose to feed my spirit over feed over feeding my flesh i choose it every day so honestly it all starts with a choice it starts with the choice because that i know not like of course, I've, I've been deep in sin before. Not too long ago, honestly. Not too long ago, I was like deep in sin. Deep in sin, lost, depressed. I was, I just was a mess, y'all. Like looking back, I was just a mess. And I came to a point in my life where I was like, God, I feel so empty. And I would go to other people in my life, hear me, because this is what a lot of us do. We'll run everything and everybody but God. So I was running to everything and everybody but God. And I was just telling some people, I was just like, I ain't really been feeling like myself. Like I'm really like depressed. And I don't really like to claim that word, but I was really in deep sadness like I feel like y'all ever seen the movie get out and you know how he went into that dark hole that's how I felt that's how I felt being deep in sin and it's just like I had to make the decision to run to God because I'm like okay I'm running to everybody else but my problems are not being filled I'm running to every other thing of the world and my problems are not being fulfilled so I'm like why not run to the one who created me you know because He's the only one that can fulfill me, heal me, and sustain me. Like, he's the only one. You know, so I eventually ran to God and I just poured my heart out. And I'm just like, I'm broken. I'm lost. I'm confused. I'm depressed. I'm hurt. I'm frustrated. I'm holding grudges of my past. Like, I'm like, I'm broken and I need you to fix me, God. Like, I really need you. Let me intercede by saying this. The enemy, he has all these things that he wants to entice us with, whether it's alcohol, whether it's men, whether it's women, whether it's weed, drugs, whether it's sex, whether it's the music we listening to. I can go on and on. He uses all these things. Hear me. He uses all these things to distract us from getting to our destiny. The enemy's, the, the enemy's plan is like, okay, you know what? If I can distract them, if I can like, like have all these like parties and like they get drunk and they don't know what's going on. If I can like distract them with, okay, like this fine man this fine, this good looking woman, this good looking man. If I can distract them with all these type of connections and these encounters and situations, they ain't going to get to their destiny. They ain't worried about God. God, they ain't worried about you. The enemy wants to keep you from getting to your destiny. He wants to keep you distracted. He wants to keep you enamored and marveled at toxicity, marveled at being a thought, marveled at 
singing songs that don't feed your soul, participating in events that's not feeding your soul. Come on now, I know I'm speaking to somebody. I had to make a decision. I had to make a decision because I felt so empty. People may portray on social media and in society like they're the happiest in the world because they have all this money. Because they have all this status and because they have all these friends. But sometimes those are the main people that need God. Those are the main people that are broken, that are lost, that are unfulfilled. There is nothing and no one in this world that can fulfill you, that can sustain you, and that can heal you like, like God can. So nonetheless, I choose him every day. Every day I choose him. Is it a challenge? Absolutely. Because the enemy is not going to allow you to obtain your destiny without a fight, without interrupting your peace. Not without, um, he's not going to do without, um, him disrupting your rhythm of your life. Dis, dis, distracting you from getting to where you got to get to. He's not going to let you get it without a fight. So if you thought that being a Christian is easy, one and two, that you're going to get your blessings without a fight, you got to wake up. This walk with God is not for the faint at heart. Very rewarding walk, but very challenging. And very, it can be very uncomfortable at times. But God is faithful. I've been in my lowest, y'all, and I'm just like, I'm not happy. God is the only way. Not your boo. Not sex. Casual sex. And I just want to remind you, you are more than casual sex. It is somebody right now watching me that is participating in casual sex. Let me tell you something. There's a thing called soul ties. I'm telling you what I know. There's a thing called soul ties. The person that you laying with, one Y'all could or could not be in a committed relationship. If, you, if you're married, I'm not talking. I'm not talking to you. Casual sex is dangerous. People are fighting demons. People are fighting battles that they don't even discuss. They don't even discuss. So you laying down with somebody, you are feeding. The demons are transferring. The spirits are transferring. It's toxic. Let it go. Let it go. I know it make you feel good. I know your father didn't do what he was supposed to do and you looking for it in, in another man. But you're not going to get it. Because only he can fulfill you and sustain you. Not five minutes. But nonetheless, I had to choose it every single day. And of course it's hard. Of course I'm battling and I'm fighting temptation every day. But that is why I have a devotion life. That's why I have a prayer life. Every morning, y'all, for like two to four hours. And I'm not saying you have to do this. You start off at whatever time. I started off. I don't even know what time. I didn't even put a timer on it when I first started off. But when I really started getting deep in my word, I noticed a pattern of like two to four hours. So every morning, and if not, for some reason I miss that morning, I'll do it midday or that night. But I try not to miss a day with spending time, like deep devotion with God. So what I'll do is I'll wake up and I'll... Of course, do my hygiene routine and stuff like that. But I'll sit at my desk and I will just pour my heart out to God. But first, I would thank him for waking me up and giving me another opportunity to get it right. Because I'm not perfect. Giving me another, another opportunity to live out his will. You know what I'm saying? I give him the reverence and the thanks due to his name. I express my gratitude to him. Because we do not serve a genie. So I don't just go to God with a wish list. I thank you for not what he's done for me, but for who he is. Thank you, God, for allowing your own, your son, your only son, giving up your only son for me, dying for me. 
I thank him for that. And then I go into pouring my heart out about the things that I'm battling with, the sins that I'm battling with, the temptation I'm battling with, praying for divine instruction, divine interventions, supernatural breakthrough. I'm praying for forgiveness. I'm praying for confirmation. I'm praying for revelation. I'm praying for forgiveness every single day, y'all. Every day I'm praying for it. Before reading my spiritual material, I make sure that I pray for a clear mind. I make sure that I pray that God opens my mind, open my spirit, so that I can fully receive what it is that he's trying to download into me. So after praying for that, I open my Bible and I open my devotion and I start reading. And with the devotion, it comes with like a reference scripture on there. So from that reference scripture, I'll read that scripture in my Bible, but I'll read the whole chapter because I want to exegete the text and actually really dive into the context of what it's all about, opposed to just reading a scripture. Engaging in that discipline, Having a devotion and prayer life has changed my life tremendously. Like that has been the foundation of the change that has, the changes that have been made in my life. Because through devotion, not only are you able to speak to God, but God is able to speak to you. You get what I'm saying? Because we have to give him time to speak to us. We have to be patient and listen. Devotion just gives you a chance to really connect with God on a whole nother level. You know, no phones. No, nothing like it's just you and God. And I'll end it off with like just worship music, like just worshiping him and thanking him. And y'all in this time, Romans 12, like Romans 12 and 2 says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Every day I was choosing to be renewed by my mind. We have to put ourselves in position to receive what it is that we want from God. See, a lot of us ask God, God, I want this. God, I want that. God, I need you. Da, 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 da. But we're not positioning ourselves in order for God to work a miracle in our life. Lives, in order for God to work a breakthrough in our lives, we have to be able to position ourselves for it. Listen, give God the opportunity to speak with you, be obedient to his word and be disciplined. A lot of us are asking God for strength. Some of the things that we ask God strength and courage for, we simply just lack discipline in that area. We lack discipline in that area. It's not strength you lack in. It's not courage. It's discipline. Excuses, procrastination, and, and laziness is played out. There comes a point in your life where you have to make a decision to say, you know what? I'm not being fulfilled in this area in my life. I'm not being served properly in this area in my life. I'm not getting what I need. So I have to make a change. When you do good, evil is always present. So when you become a Christian... The devil not going to stop coming for you. He's actually going to come after you harder because he sees that you're trying to you want you trying to switch over. No pun intended, but check out my latest podcast episode switching over, and I talk about going from worldly to a, a full committed Christian. The enemy is not going to stop coming after you. But if you like, oh, I don't, I don't really want them problems. Let let me tell you something. God will never put you in a position where one you don't have a choice, and two that he's not going to help you through. God got you. He's not going to just throw you out there to the wolves and expect you to figure it out by yourself. He got you. But you have to be willing. A lot of us think that we got to be perfect to walk with Christ. No, God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. I was not qualified. But God is qualifying me through the process. Absolutely. But I wasn't qualified. He met me where I was in the slumps. He met me where I was deep in sin. He met me where I was lost, confused. He will meet you where you are. But you got to choose him. Everything that look good ain't good, y'all. And when I say that, I'm saying that in regards to this world, Satan is taking our generation out one by one. Last night I was on TikTok and I'm just seeing how young women speaking to themselves and how young women how they address themselves how they address their friends and i'm just like we should be uplifting one another with our speech we got to be more intentional and mindful about our speech y'all we have to because proverbs 18 and 21 says life and death lies in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof so whatever it is that you're speaking you're going to reap what you're sowing whether it's good or it's bad but um but yeah the main way how i how i like not stray away 
and like I continue to focus on God is I continue to engage in the disciplines staying connected to him how how do i stay connected to him i make sure that i'm i'm engaging with things that's feeding my spirit but starving my flesh and that's where a point we have to get to y'all where we're starving that flesh because baby what you water will grow there we go thank you holy spirit there we go what you water will grow what do you want to see grow in your life your flesh or your spirit and the Bible, it says that if you are ruled by your sinful nature, that's going to lead to death. But if you are ruled and you are led by your spirit, that will lead to eternal life. What you water will grow. I've been deep in sin. I've been of I've been deep of the world. I know what that life is like. I don't want that life anymore because I wasn't fulfilled. Because everything that looked good wasn't good for me. Everything that felt good wasn't it wasn't good for me. And everything that's popular wasn't really lit, in my opinion. Because this is where the power really is. Being a child of God. And not only just being a child of God, reading his word, but living it out. I'm not perfect, but I can confidently say that I'm living this thing out to the best of my ability. It's challenging. People, are, people say a whole bunch of stuff. Oh my gosh, like you always... At home or I'm preserving my energy. I'm being smart. I'm being disciplined. I'm not going to put myself in a position to be tempted knowing that I can be tempted. It's kind of like knowing better, doing better. You know what I'm saying? You'll begin to realize that when you walk with Christ, what you do goes against the grain of the world. How you live goes against the grain of the world. Because there's a thing called world, worldly values and godly values. Whose values are you living by? So someone had a question about anxiety. Like when you're stepping into like a new season. So when you, like I said, like when you are, when you develop a relationship with Christ and you start engaging in those disciplines that I previously talked about, like, you know, spending time with God, you will begin to see your anxiety lessen because it's like, when you spend time with God, he begins to reveal your identity. Of course, you're going to have the enemy in the back trying to tell you who he wants you to be. But when the enemy tries to come up against you with fear and depression, and anxiety, you have to remind him who God says that you are. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. In the Bible, I want to say Matthew 4 verses 1 through 11. Devil was, the devil tempted Jesus in the wilderness. In the wilderness okay like he was saying all this type of stuff and every time jesus was hitting him with a scripture and that's how we got to be jesus is our greatest example so whenever you're battling anxiety depression fear you got to make sure one that you have a devotion in a prayer life okay and that you really like are being disciplined y'all because you really have to choose this stuff i don't like that's as 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 straightforward as it is. you have to choose to live this life every day. Of course, it's going to come moments where it's like you fall short, but you got to repent and you got to get back up and you got to keep going. So spending time with God, developing a prayer life and a devotion life and staying connected to him and reading his word. And, 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 and always remember that the reinforcement of repetition, that's good. Because you're starting to develop habits. So keep doing that and you will begin to see a cease in um, anxiety because you'll find that most of the time we experience anxiety because we don't have that security. So in God's word, you find security. So definitely spending time with God, reading his word, you will um, see that your anxiety will decrease. And if like you're battling with like being confident in who god has called you to be once again spend time with him honestly y'all everything goes back to spending time with god everything goes back to spending time with god so it's through spending time with god that you will find that confidence that you will find that resilience that you will find that strength that courage that that revelation of like that you're qualified that you're valued that you're worthy like you will find fulfillment in God, y'all, I just love God so much. And I'm just so grateful from for where he's brought me from and where he's taken me. I'm just so, so grateful. Like, 
if I wouldn't have like gotten myself together and been responsive to his call, I wouldn't be able to make this video right now. So that about wraps up this video. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you so much for supporting my podcast if you're not make sure you tap make sure you check out tap into greater um with the lexus i die i'm available on apple Podcasts, mute uh spotify amazon music audible i love you guys so so much and always remember god is seeking progression not perfection do not give up do not give up do not give in the devil is always going to be talking his crap but don't you forget what god told you love y'all and stay blessed